when I was in high school, I had a friend named Julio. He was, as a freshman, he was a little over 300 pounds. He was really obese. And they had on that, he was kind of bullied because because of his weight. And he wanted to lose a bunch of weight because he was getting bullied so much. On top of that, he was autistic, but he was a little more competent than other people, so uh, people weren't really aware that like he was autistic. And because of that, he could have done any sport to lose the weight, but instead, he uh, chose long distance running. So today, I'm going to talk about why long distance running is a little more beneficial than other sports. And the reason I know about that is because I ran cross country for four years. I was captain for two of them, and I ran a varsity. And part of my goal, like role, was to know what workouts we were doing and the purpose of those workouts and how they benefited us. Why it's relevant to you guys is because you may or may not want to get in shape faster. So anyways, I'm actually going to start with saying my uh, four different reasons, start off with why uh, it's less painful, then I'm going to talk about why it's the fastest way to lose weight due to calorie count, and why it's most convenient, and lastly I'll talk about why it strengthens your bones the healthiest. My first point is because it's less harmful to the body, and by this I mean uh, everyone has a pain threshold, and the threshold is your body can handle a lot more than you think it can. Uh, especially when it's under stress, and by that, I don't mean psychological, I mean physical stress. And that works by, when you feel pain in your body, it, um... The computer's off. Nope, it just came on, there it is. Okay. Right, when you feel pain in your body, you have pain receptors, and they say you had a, a bite or tick or whatever, you feel it here, they go through your peripheral nervous system up to your brain telling you that you're in pain. And then, according to WebMD, when the body works out, it releases a chemical in your brain called endorphins. And basically endorphins is just what gives you a, a lot of athletes called runner's high. You feel less pain, you're more energetic, more excited to do something. So that's how, and because running is a long, long distance running is a long continuous sport, it releases the most endor the most endorphins in your brain for a longer set a longer time, so it's a lot less painful than playing football and getting hit in the face, boxing and stuff like that. And for my second point, I'd like to talk about why oh, not only is endorphins the most amount, but uh, running also helps because it was weight the fastest. And that's because of calorie count. Um, Fox News health but uh, the top 10 uh, most caloric burning sports and put long distance running at the top because it burned over 900 to 1500 calories per hour. And soccer came in second because 70% of running, 70% of soccer is just running. Uh, and according to, that's according to the National Federation of State and High School Association. And third day, I talk about why <coughs> Why running is actually the most convenient sport compared to other sports. And that's because running, um, all you really need is a pair of shoes. You don't really need to go out and like, buy like gloves for boxing. You don't need to go out to a ring. Not like football, you need, a, you need pads, you need shoulders, you need, a, you need a ball, you need open space. Running, you just really get shoes and kind of go wherever you want. That's why it's also the most convenient. Uh, I guess space is like the main point. You really just don't need, you don't even know, so you work on a treadmill to run, different things like that. Uh, for my four things I want to say is, okay, is why, um, why uh, running is actually the healthiest for your body. Uh, physical therapist Andrea Cespedes, said that uh, running is the healthiest for your body and due to your, uh, the bone density gets released on your body. And by bone density, I mean the, how strong your bones actually are. It's not like with uh, swimming, yoga, aerobics, and stuff like that, because that's all working out your muscles and not necessarily your bones. So your bones are usually weak. People just rely on those. So running is actually better than that. And with football, weightlifting, wrestling, stuff like that, 
you're actually lifting weight that's unnatural, and you're lifting weight past your bone, your weight limit. So due to that, it's kind of, I think it's less, <laughs> it's less healthier than, um, than running, because running just your natural body weight. And lastly, we talked about, in conclusion, I like to say that running helps with your weight to lose faster. It helps with your bone density. It also helps with your uh, things like that. Uh, to leave you guys with something, uh, running keeps people in shape faster and helps people. Just giving you guys different alternatives to losing weight in case you guys are interested. Thank you. Leslie, some comments? Um, yes. <laughs> I think I'm more nervous than he was. <laughs> but, um, so I like the beginning story he used as an example. And I also, the reasons he gave, that was he had good transitions to them. But um, one thing he could have added was he said he was a runner. He should have added like, some of his stories into it. And now he got like the runner's high. Because my experience, I never got that. I'm a super lazy person. And I just want to know how that is. And he only said it like twice, I think. But I didn't say it as much either, so I don't want to bash you. <laughs> a little bit more citation and probably read a, um, probably practice a little more. So you won't that next. Okay, thank you. Yeah, a couple of things that you said, I think, are uh, accurate descriptions. Some more of your personal examples would be good. I'm, I'm still wondering what happened to Julio. I like, did he lose the weight? Did he, you know, uh, did he, did he stop getting bullied? You know, that kind of stuff. So you, you kind of set us up for a story, and I thought that, that you were going to come back to it a couple of times in the speech, or at least at the end, and we never heard more about it, you know, so it was like, hmm, you know, I know it was there for a reason, but I don't think that you quite figured out what the reason was. And uh, I'm going to agree with Leslie. The personal examples would probably make it a little bit more intriguing. Like, And I like the idea of, like, when you're talking about runner's high, you could talk about being in cross country and how you would get into that uh, second mile and be working on it and, you know, thinking, oh, man, how tough this is going to be. But, you know, about halfway through that second mile suddenly it would kick in and you'd your energy step would go up or, or whatever it is i mean i don't know i'm making things up but you would know because it happened to you i assume and then you could talk about it you know no I, yeah yeah so so that's you got to layer some stuff in there i can see that you're trying to do the organizational material in the speech the way we talked about it, but it's a little bit awkward the way you were doing it because it feels like you are you know, layering it on top of stuff rather than doing the presentation in a, in a more fluid way of presenting it. For example, the very first illustration on this is that, and now to my preview statement, which is I'm going to tell you what the four things are. It, it just feels like, holy criminy, that's... Just tell us, we're going to cover this by talking about these four things. That's fine. You don't have to say, let me give you the preview statement where I tell you what the four things are going to be, and here's what the four things are. It just it belabors the point. And that's, that's just, I can tell that you're trying to do the right thing. It just needs to, I think I've said this before, sometimes things are, you know, when you, you remember learning to drive a car, 
Yeah, when you first get behind the wheel, everything feels a little unnatural. It's like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? You grip the wheel too tight, you brake too hard, you hit the accelerator too fast, you signal too soon, you're, you're trying to get everything right, and you, you overdo it kind of stuff. You, you, you've got the skill down, now it just needs to become a little bit more natural. And that's kind of where you are at this particular point on that. The same thing with the, the, the division of the points. I could tell where you were at every point because you just kind of ham-fistedly labeled it. Now the second thing I'm going to talk about, third, there's like no transitions between those points. And it would be nice if there was a little bit of, you know, now that you understand what the runner's high is, let's talk about why you want to get that runner's high and go to the third point, you know, that sort of thing. You have to have a little bit of transition language so it flows a little bit more smoothly. So I, it's organized, but it's still kind of at that mechanical stage as opposed to a more fluid, natural stage. I, I also kind of agree with Leslie. I heard good citations, but I only heard them in the one section of the speech. And <laughs> so you need to kind of distribute that too. The visuals, I wasn't quite sure why I was looking at the pain receptacle process on that first slide. I understood the idea of the endorphins and that you're responding to something, but how did, because the example that you used, if you stepped on something sharp or you put a pin in you, or I forget exactly what you said, I said, how does that relate to running? You know, how, is it, how do you get that? And it might be that because the process of running puts extra strain on the nerves that they react a particular way, but I didn't get that from your presentation. And so I wasn't sure why I was looking at that first slide, it, except that I, it does have something to do with the endorphins, which you're clearly talking about in the second. Then you don't have anything else in the rest of the presentation. I'm going, well, how long does it take for us to get that runner's high? Do you get it uh, in mile two? Or like you, if you've got to do a marathon, you've got to wait until mile 18? I, I don't know any of those kinds of things. And I, that might have been something that you could have done on another uh, table chart or uh, a graph or something like that. Just another way to present that information. You do a pretty good job speaking, <coughs> talking to the audience. Um, you're not overly dependent on the notes. You have to look at them occasionally, but usually you're talking to us, which is good. You just need to be a little bit more practiced at it because it's sometimes the language gets stuck a, a for a second. You get caught up in what you're saying, and it, it doesn't come out as fluidly. All right, thank you.